Ben Shapiro spends all of his time yelling and being mad because he can't be that young debater anymore, so he's an old, grumpy man. And this is Ben Shapiro reacting to the DNC tonight, which featured Tim Walz's speech. Well, I'm really irritable because I don't like the sensation of the entire Democratic media human centipede peeing on my leg and then insisting that we all dance in the rain. We are being lied to. It is annoying. It is irritating beyond all reason. So stop telling me Kamala Harris is a wondrous politician and a symbol of hope and joy who dances and sings and cooks rather than what she is, a manipulative, chameleonic, corrupt careerist who shifts her positions and her person at whim and who will not answer a single damned question, not one. How long until we get one actual argument from Ben Shapiro? These are all emotional appeals, even down to the answering a single question thing, as if Donald Trump actually answers a question directly ever in his life. We are now on day 33 of answering zero questions. She's running for president of the United States. And we're supposed to believe that it's all about the vibes, man. It's all about how she really loves Venn diagrams. And she's feeling, are you feeling the joy? Are you feeling the joy? Stop telling me. Tim Walls. A Historically, and especially with Donald Trump, Republicans have always been the vibe campaign. So like Ronald Reagan, the new morning in America, you are a patriot if you support Republicans. You know, if you support Republicans, you back the blue, you are in favor of the army, and you're against everything that liberals do or whatever. You know, Republicans own patriotism. And now Democrats are doing a vibes campaign where they talk about patriotism. The Democrats are chanting USA, USA, USA. Um, they have a old football coach as VP. Um, with his entire old team coming on stage talking about how he was how he was a public school teacher and everything and now Ben Shapiro after supporting vibes campaigns for the past 50 years starting with Reagan the actor and then going to Trump the actor where Trump literally does not answer one we don't have a health care policy from Trump yet it's been eight years it's been all vibes but now finally Democrats are taking the vibes and Ben Shapiro's pissed a good old boy championship winning football coach instead of what he is a radical left winger who caters to trans politics and lets BLM radicals burn down the major cities in Minnesota and calls socialism neighborliness and apparently visits China every five seconds. Stop lying to me. Also, he's a weird kook. Have you seen him? Stop telling me that Joe Biden is like George Washington. He's a man willing to sacrifice for the public good. When in reality, Joe Biden is the most corrupt politician of my lifetime. He used his public position to enrich his corrupt venal family for literally decades since before I was born. And then he was stabbed in the back by his own party and sent to political hospice care just to get rid of him. And now you're saying that he's sacrificial? He's Cincinnati or George Washington? Stop lying. By the way, Trump's family has profited from politics around like 15 times more than Biden's family did in about one-tenth of the time. Stop telling me that Barack Obama is a messianic do-gooder. He's a man descending from the clouds to bring- And you can call out both, but like, what is this right here? You can tell Ben Shapiro was a theater, a theater kid, you know, because he's really put it on the act. Rid of him. And now you're saying that he's sacrificial? He's Cincinnati or George Washington? St and by the way, it is a big deal that Biden was even willing to say that he did something wrong. You know, Biden said in his speech, I've done a lot of wrong things. Or I think he, he said, I made a lot of mistakes in my life, but I gave you my all. Donald Trump cannot even admit that when he shared the AI picture of Kamala's crowd, that the crowd was real. They asked him the next day about the crowd um, from the picture Trump shared. And he's like, I can't say who was at the rally and who wasn't. Donald Trump has not admitted to being wrong about anything his entire life. Even the most minuscule things, Donald Trump has this complex in his, bre uh, in his brain where he's unable to admit any faults about himself as a person. Stop lying. Stop telling me that Barack Obama is a messianic do-gooder. He's a man descending from the clouds to bring truths from on high to all of us rather than what he is, which is an ugly, manipulative, racially polarizing machine politician who's willing to claim the right to steal other people's money and spend it on his favorite people and then divide America based on race and then make off with hundreds of millions of dollars in book and TV contracts. I'm sorry Obama was popular enough to sell books and everything, but Donald Trump literally just gave tax cuts and ran a huge budget deficit only for giving tax cuts to billionaires and soon to be trillionaires to Donald Trump himself and also to, to Donald Trump's friends. Trump cut regulations for his friends. Trump put uh, like a DeVos in front of, uh, in charge of the Department of Education, someone who is for private schools, anti-public education. He puts Betsy DeVos in, front, in charge of that agency with the intent to destroy it. Trump has been the one that has like openly been giving his friends gifts. At least Democrats, if they run deficits 
it's with a presumption they're going to be spending that money on the American people. I'd much rather run a $2 trillion budget deficit for the infrastructure plan we passed and the CHIPS Act and everything else we push for um, during the Biden admin versus doing it for tax cuts for the billionaires. But Ben has not made one argument so far, by the way. He has not made actual uh, like actual arguments or policy appeals um, or facts. This is all performative anger stuff. All the time claiming capitalism is bad and America is unfree. Stop telling me that Michelle Obama is a charming figure of unity, one of the great lights of our age, when she is instead a radical racial leftist who attended America's top universities and is worth bank and complains about the evils of America from one of her three multi-million dollar mansions. She earned off the back of being married to Barack Obama and then complains about the affirmative action of generational wealth while her daughters are worth trust fund 10 million bucks apiece. Stop telling me. If you're like a 40 to 60 year old black individual in America today, there's a chance that your parent was never able to vote because of Jim Crow laws. Like it is a thing. Bill Clinton is a down home back country type when he's a Yale law grad who screwed every broad he could find with or without consent and stole half the White House on his way out. Stop telling me Hillary Clinton is a sacrificial public servant when she is a corrupt harridan who spent her entire career getting ahead, lying, living off her husband's checkered legacy, a legacy, by the way, she helped enshrine by threatening his rape victims. Stop telling me Doug Emhoff is America's dad-in-chief and Jewish liaison when he screwed the nanny and got her pregnant and has done literally nothing Jewish his entire adult life while raising a daughter who donates to pro-Hamas groups. He's done exactly nothing Jewish his entire adult life. And then says he's more in touch with his Judaism because he attends church on Easter with Kamala Harris at some rainbow flag church. Give me a break. And most of all, stop telling me, most of all, truly, stop telling me that the Democrats' positions don't matter, that we should not listen to them. Stop telling me they haven't been in charge. Stop telling me that I'm supposed to pretend that they haven't been in charge for 12 out of the last 16 years of my life. Bill Clinton brought up a really good stat last night when it, it literally is 50 to one when it comes to job creation, Republicans versus Democrats. Um, and I love it when they bring up the argument, they've been in charge all of these years. And it's like every single popular policy that works, Democrats need to fight Republicans to do something good, like the infrastructure bill. Republicans vote against it. And then Republican politicians turn around and use that infrastructure bill, use the money from that in their own state and say, wow, look what I did. I love this money we got for our state roads. But they don't credit the Biden admin and they don't talk about how they voted against the policy that they are now getting praised for doing even though they voted against it. So whenever they say, why didn't Kamala do the child tax or the you know child tax credits or the immigration bill or whatever else, we, we know, we have the votes for it, that Republicans said, no, we're not doing this stuff. They said no every corner. Um, on, on every turn, they said, no, 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 we're not doing popular things. And that their threats to rewrite the Congress. You know what we are doing? We're getting, we're getting rid of Roe v. Wade. Donald Trump said we're going to get an infrastructure bill 50,000 times. Infrastructure is easy. Trump never did infrastructure. All Donald Trump did was get rid of social policy like Roe v. Wade. Constitution to destroy the Supreme Court, their threats to destroy the filibuster, to confiscate the earned wealth of people who innovate, to spend endless amounts of money that they did not produce, to institute price controls, to inflate the currency, to nationalize health care, to cut the military, to trans the children, to abort anything that... Trans the children, Moves, no. To enshrine voting procedures that facilitate fraud, to open the border and amnesty. That facilitate fraud. Ben Shapiro is so unbelievable. This is actually depressing. He used to make arguments. See, everyone who enters, stop telling me none of that matters. Stop it. Stop telling me that. Stop telling me that I should ignore that because Amanda Gorman, ooh, hoo, 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 and Kenan Thompson, ooh, hoo, 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 and Oprah Winfrey, and Lil John turned down for what? Is supposed to come. Did he do this for like Hulk Hogan at the RNC? For the fact that this Democratic Party is off its political rocker and John Legend and Stevie Wonder and Pink. Stop telling me that. Pop ben Shapiro also said that Democrats are against capitalism. So the corporate tax rate was 35 percent under Obama. Trump decreased it to 21 percent. And Harris wants to bring it back to 28 percent. Um, everything she says is about facil facilitating the free market in a way that can actually last, be sustainable, um, and support the working and middle class along with those at the top. Everything Harris is saying is very free market oriented. Saying she's a socialist or a communist, anyone that says that should not be taken seriously because she is so far from that, it's laughable. Politics should be treated as a game show. It is not a game show. Politics you support Trump. is always and forever about what people do with power. It's not about joy or about vibes. It's not about being brat. It's about what the jackass you elect 
do with power. That's the whole thing. It's not about if you in some sad sack way want Kamala to be your mamala or Tim Walls to be your high school coach from Friday Night Lights or you want Doug Emhoff to be your dad who f***ed the nanny. It's about whether you want these people to be in charge of the country, to set the rules for the economy, to set the rules internationally. That's the thing we should all be focused on. Well, folks, all of this is insane. It can be quite agitating. And sometimes the best way to advertising is money. Nice money. Candle of facts. He wants money. You know, it might Candle also help facts. your feelings. Go to the uh, free big brands. Candle Candle of facts. A little bit. No. Just time in American history. Spoiled by the fact that we, never, we don't have to face down existential conflict. Maybe we're just unserious enough. That's pretty much all politics is. It's now just a personal popularity contest. Fine. If that's the case, then we get what all failing republics deserve. But there are still many of us who have a stake in the future of the country and think the future of the country matters and think that policy matters and that... Okay, there is nothing happening in America today on Ben Shapiro's side to justify this kind of reaction except for the culture war. Right now in America, when it comes to poverty, crime, um, on almost every material metric, America today is better than it was ever before in human history. And our prospects for the future look better than they ever had. The only way they don't look good is if, if you're against integration of immigrants, if you're against the population becoming more diverse, if you're against the LGBT community, if you're against all of these things in general. Um, the only reason to be scared in America right now, unless if you are from a poor community which is struggling and you're asking for relief, which is not what Ben Shapiro's politics is doing. His is just like causing anger, division, just like Donald Trump's is. Someone who is dying right now on the street, begging for food and childcare, they are probably voting Democrat. The numbers say that. Um, the more poor you are, the more likely you are to vote Democrat. It's still going to be like that. The more working class you are, the more likely you're going to be to vote Democrat. The main predictors for not voting Dem and voting Republican is being straight and white. Those are the two top demographic predictors of, of being a Republican voter in the year 2024. Now, that's just stats. That's not every single person, but that makes you more likely to vote for Trump. And that's the main reason why people do. It's not because of inflation or because of um, immigration itself. It's because of the cultural issues that are impacting us. Nothing justifies getting this mad. There's no reason to think we're about to have a huge crash or be in World War V or whatever, more than any other point in history. There's no reason to have a response like Ben Shapiro is having right here for any reason. What these people do with power absolutely matters. We're still Within America, and foreign policy is a different thing, but in, in, in uh, comparison to every other moment in history, saying anything's worse right now than it's ever been, other than disinformation on the right, other than fascism rising on the right, is just being dishonest. Matters, and that what these people do with power absolutely matters. We're still worried about the future of our kids in this country. If you are, everything you're seeing at the DNC should be insulting. I mean, deeply, deeply, profoundly insulting because it is. And if you don't feel insulted, it's because you're caught up in the stupidity yourself. And at that point, you know what? America gets what it deserves. So he's convincing his viewers to be mad while also saying anyone who disagrees with them is an idiot, essentially. That's the entire point of this. He has not brought up one actual, like, fundamental real thing that's happening. All right. So here's the thing. Before I get to the actual DNC, which has just been it's a roadshow production. It's like an off-Broadway production of a not very good Broadway show. But we're all supposed to stand and cheer because they're saying they're, they're singing fight song or they're bringing forth Katy Perry or who, whoever they're bringing forth tonight. Who gives a flying? Okay, but here's the thing. There's some actual bad news for Kamala Harris. I know. I know. We're not supposed to say it because we're all in celebrate Kamala time. I mean, sure, she has never done anything worthwhile her entire life. Literally her entire life, she has not done anything worthwhile. She was a short-lived DA before she started being Willie Brown, who elevated her in California politics by getting her a job with the San Francisco DA. She promptly defenestrated her own boss and ran for that job. And then I know we're not supposed to talk about the fact that she was a terrible attorney general of California. She barely sneaked through a race with Steve Cooley because he blew it in the last days of the race. And then she was elected senator in California in a race that had no Republicans in it because they changed the rules. And then she failed in her first presidential nomination race because she's a terrible politician who actually is not particularly smart. Some of Kamala's best achievements come with her sex crime cases um, that she uh, successfully prosecuted sex crimes um, and violent crimes. Um, 
And Ben Shapiro's making an argument right here. He's making another pop argument. She hasn't been an, uh, a great campaigner. She has not been great on the campaign trail nationally in the past. I think her current campaign is really good, but she has not been great in the past um, as a campaigner. Uh, but when it comes to her work as a prosecutor, there's almost, like, there's literally nothing to criticize about it. Um, and fully passing over any positive aspect of her career just to say, you know, Kamala slept to the top is, again, you shouldn't take it seriously. Uh, you know, we don't have to get mad about it. There's no point to get mad. It's just not serious. And she fell apart upon impact. And then she was selected from the scrap heap of history because she was a black woman by Joe Biden. And then she was an awful vice president. But now we're supposed to believe that now is the time to celebrate Kamala for all of her lifelong achievements of failing up. No one in American political history has failed up quite like Kamala Harris has failed up. Trump has 34 felonies and tried to orchestrate a coup against the U.S. government. And Ben Shapiro's only argument is, well, it didn't work, so it's not going to work again, so I'm going to elect them. That's like saying that Kamala Harris is someone who failed up after Trump bankrupted six to seven businesses. He is, he is a failure, a huge failure, with a big inheritance. You give anyone as much money as Trump got, I would be a billionaire easily. A lot of people would be. He didn't do many impressive things other than be good on TV. Trump was good on TV. Trump was a good actor. But Ben Shapiro calling out Kamala and saying she failed upwards and saying that Trump and not making those criticisms of, of Trump nearly as often, nearly as mad, um, nearly as anger, angrily sounding, whatever the word is. But there is some bad news in this celebratory moment for Kamala Harris. In fact, there are actually four pieces of quite bad news for Kamala Harris in this supposedly celebratory moment. Bad news number one. She is not winning big. Now, with all of the media coverage of Kamala Harris, with the fact that, again, 33 days of no questions, none, zero, zip, zilch, the fact she has not defined any of her actual political positions, the fact she's a complete cipher, and the fact that the entire media have gone into spasms of orgasmic joy. Oh, my God, bring up actual points. the fact points. that Joe Biden is Please. no longer the nominee. Even with all of that, she is barely leading nationally. Trump literally answered the inflation question with his inflation policy. I'm going to hire the best people to do really good things and give them all the power they need to reduce costs. He said he's going to reduce energy costs by 50 to 70 percent. He just said that. His plan is just to reduce costs and to say drill, baby, drill. Although America is leading the world in oil, in oil drilling right now and oil production. And if you think about how crude oil actually works, you get crude oil from the ground. You have a limited number of refineries. So unless if you're going to use the government to force oil companies to open more refineries to stop bottlenecking the system and also drill more oil, you're not going to collapse energy prices by drilling more. So Trump's two answers to inflation are not real answers at all. They're not logical. Ben Shapiro has been ranting for 10 minutes and he has not made a single argument. He has not gotten to one logical point yet. Barely, barely, barely. According to the Real Club Politics polling average, Kamala Harris is leading nationally by 1.5 points. That is well within any margin of error. The last several polls show her up anywhere from three to four points nationally. Again, that is not a massive lead. It isn't. I mean, she's barely breaking 48% in a lot of these polls. You would imagine with this kind of media coverage, she should be at like 54%, 55%. She is not. In the top battleground states, according to the Real Clear Politics polling average, she is within margin of error in Wisconsin. She's up by just one. Basically, they're dead even in Pennsylvania. She's up a couple of points in Michigan. She's dead even in Arizona. She's behind in Nevada, North Carolina, and Georgia. Okay, every single one of those races is within two points, according to the Real Clear Politics polling average. So the bad news for Kamala is if you have a month of days in which the coverage is like nothing I've ever seen. I mean, truly, at least Barack Obama had talent. She is a talentless hack, truly a talentless hack, spun into gold, like Rumpelstiltskin in the back room over here, spinning straw into gold. That's what media are doing. And yet, and yet, she is not pulling away. In fact, if you squint, you can see a slight polling bump for Donald Trump in the last couple of days. And that's despite the fact that Trump has not run a particularly disciplined campaign over the course of the last few weeks. There is no pulling away in presidential races. No matter what, even if Kamala ran the perfect campaign as the perfect candidate, it would still be within a certain margin of, you know, victory or defeat. Um, there is no pulling away. And the poll average is moving up or down does not mean that much you need long trends line um you need long trend lines of data and polls are already very flimsy um in how much they predict especially this far away from the election you'll see accurate polls maybe a week from the election um right now in august still you can't tell much um so this is also 
unserious commentary yet again. And it can be random, like which polls are releasing that week or like which, um, uh, which demographics did they test for? Um, did they change their methodology at all? Which polls are producing more polls and in general, like all this stuff really does not matter. Um, and the media coverage of Harris has been very skeptical. Wall Street Journal, New York Times, CNN, they all been going at Harris really aggressively grading Trump on a curve. If Trump even answers a question, which means if he takes a question and responds with a bunch of dumb words, like we're going to do big things. The supply chain is breaking the supply chain. We've never seen terrible things happen to the supply chain. I wait 20 months to get a package. The supply chain, you never thought such terrible things could happen to our country in supply chain. Trump will answer a question like that and make like a full sentence and the media will, will applaud. Meanwhile, they want Kamala in her first month of the campaign to give a detailed policy analysis the Harris campaign has been setting their own media. They don't give interviews. Um, they've been having different governors like Pete Buttigieg uh, from the Transpor uh, Transportation Secretary, a, a bunch of other uh, members of the Democratic Party tackling the media. So Kamala can focus on campaigning. Tim Walz can focus on actually campaigning and talking directly to voters. Um, I don't know this obsession. I don't know what this obsession with answering questions from the, from the media is right now. And Ben Shapiro is not even asking any legitimate like questions right now about what the policies are and, and whatever else. He's just making claims and saying really angry things in a really dramatic fashion.